stick a move in the ring. You can hit me with the words you fling. Joining me right now is UFC Bantamweight slash Flyweight. Flyweight. Yeah. Flyweight, right? Flyweight, right? Yeah, That's flyweight. what I thought. Jerome, man, I appreciate you coming back on, man. The last time we spoke, it was ahead of your Contender Series fight. I didn't get you before your UFC debut, but I'm happy to get you on for this fight coming up. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great, man. Glad to be back on the show. Thanks for having me. Just feeling good, getting ready for January 20th. Yeah, before we got on, uh, we were talking about all these restrictions, and, 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 we, and it's hard to plan anything out nowadays because, you know, sometimes it's good. With the COVID and sometimes it's bad. What is the situation for you right now there in uh, in New Mexico? Uh, right here in New Mexico, we're starting to do a little bit better on the cases. The numbers are starting to go down a little bit. Um, but just about five, six weeks ago, we were back on shutdown and gyms were closed. And it was back like trying to figure out how we're going to get ready for this fight with all the gyms in town closed. So like you said, it's kind of you never know how things are going to go. But right now, it seems like we're on an upward climb and everything's been open. So that's good for us. You know, when you schedule out a week or so, do you do you look at it and say, OK, we might have to switch it to the outside workouts? Have you been doing a lot of that? Yeah, when that pandemic first happened, you know, we were or let's see, what was it like mid-November, I think, is when we had to go on shutdown here in New Mexico again. And so, yeah, it's kind of like we had already had a set schedule for training camp, what we were going to do, how we're going to get ready. And then when that happened, it's like, OK, now we got to reset everything, replan everything. And then the gyms open up again. And then it's like, OK, now now we got to come up with a different schedule. And so right now, though, I mean, it's kind of nice. It seems like things are going to stay open for a while. And I feel like we kind of start hearing a little bit of rumors here in town when stuff is going to close. Santa Fe is a pretty small city. So um, but yeah, right now everything's going good. And. Yeah, it's hard when things close too because like my livelihood is being a personal trainer so you know when i can't uh, when the gyms are closed i can't work and i can't train so definitely hard to plan for with everything going on even even holidays like christmas and thanksgiving was super weird this year because we they uh we were advised by our governor you know not to have big gatherings and stuff like that so thanksgiving was literally just me my fiance and my daughter here at home so is great definitely different though same with christmas just really low-key i was talking to a fighter in the uk he's about to fight on fight island also and uh, he was saying during christmas the government said that you can visit your family but then the next day there's social distancing and he was like i don't understand one one day you could be with your family but the other day you cannot what, what are you talking about doesn't make any sense yeah just some of the logic behind everything is kind of crazy like they say once you get it you uh you're immune for 90 days and stuff like that it's like mm. am i really immune for 90 days i put on a 90 day timer and at the end of that 90 days i'm not immune anymore yeah. i don't know yeah it's weird but anyways man well you you did make your ufc debut in september man in you know not a good not a good outing for yourself you know and uh and you've never been knocked out in your career i just i just went back and looked at that you know take us through the process of the the medical suspension and, and getting back into training after that <clears throat> yeah i hadn't really been hit like that in a long time since like my amateur kickboxing days i i would got wobbled a couple times I, i've got dropped maybe once or twice in amateur kickboxing but never in mma and uh luckily i didn't have to go into the concussion protocol because then i'm not too sure what that would entail if i would have to go get like cat scans in town and stuff like that um, I have gotten concussions when I was younger, and usually I'd be asking the same questions over and over. So he cracked me pretty good, but he didn't quite give me a concussion. Um, and I remember in the moment when I got hit, it was just kind of like, it almost felt like a car crash. You know, we hit really loud for a second, crashed, and then it was kind of me just trying to grab onto him. But I wasn't, like, out. So, yeah, um, they put me on, I think it was like a 30-day suspension. They recommended uh, just, like, really light to no training. So... I took about like two weeks off. I didn't quite listen to what they said and I got back in the groove of things. And um, yes, yeah, I felt great right from the beginning. You know, I, I, that's what I like to do is stay active in between training camps. I like to always be in the gym atmosphere. So um, yeah, suspension wasn't too bad. Getting back in the swing of training felt really good. So did you feel like you needed to like revisit anything in training after that fight or add anything to your regimen? Yeah, watching that fight against Tyson now, I'm like he just completely uh, took me out of my comfort zone and my my game plan. You know, he got right in my face, and um, I I was like rewatching the video and I was moving very awkwardly along the fence, and I just wasn't quite getting off the combos that I normally like to get off. So 
looking back, I wish I would have circled a little bit more, tried controlling the center a little bit more. Because the thing with Tyson Nam is he doesn't throw a whole lot of diverse strikes. He's not throwing a bunch of knees and push kicks and stuff. He's just trying to time that big overhand. So looking back, I was very like offensive minded. I was just thinking about what I was doing. I wasn't really reacting to what he was doing. So um, that's moving forward. I think I need to work my counters a little bit more um, and just be aware when you're in there inside the cage. That's such a huge thing. For this upcoming date, January 20th, you're originally set to face O'Day Osborne, and then he was replaced by Francisco Nazareno. Now, with this, you know, I'm always interested with the fighters because, you know, info gets out somehow. Did you know about this switch beforehand, or did you find out online? Uh, I found out probably, like, the day that they announced it, so it was, like, pretty close. But, yeah, they had a... Well, I don't know. They had told me that the O'Day fight was off. And then, like, that night, my manager told me that uh, he threw out the name of Francisco right away. And then, like, the next day, it's all over social media. And I'm like, what the hell? And then uh, I asked my manager, I'm like, hey, bro, can I announce the fight? And he's like, no, no, I'll just hold off on it. And I'm like, well, I don't know. It's kind of weird. I heard that the other guy had posted stuff about it already. So, hmm. yeah, I, I found out right before. Yeah, it's a trip, uh, the, the game of... Uh of the journalists like finding out information and, and then being able to like release that information ahead of the fighters. And sometimes the fighters don't even know that anything has changed until it's online. Yeah, seriously. It must be, that's, it that's must kind of a... mess with your mind a little bit, right? If, if, cause you already knew that Ode was go like off the card, but imagine if you didn't mm -hmm. know. Yeah, exactly. If I would have, if they wouldn't have told me that and then the next day I'm just seeing me against Francisco Figueredo, I'd have been like, huh, that's kind of weird. I got to call Jason, see what's going on there. No doubt. No. When when you looked him up, you know what I mean, and, and got to see his record and got to see some of his fights, what did you think about him? He's pretty hard to find video on. I've found a couple uh, tapes. Um, he looks like he fights kind of similar to his brother. We're kind of just like get, trying to get ready for the way that camp fights. Uh, it says he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, black belt in Muay Thai. Um, and then, like, doing a little bit deeper research, looking at his record and stuff like that, I see he's been, like, very inactive. He has, like, four fights in, like, the last five years or something like that, and he's coming off of a draw. So I kind of feel – I'm kind of, like, putting a little chip on my shoulder. I, I like to kind of mentally get myself, like, you know, a little, like, pissed off of the dude sometimes. So I feel like, uh, you know, he's coming off of a draw. He hasn't been very active. Uh, I feel like this dude's really only getting signed to the UFC because Dave Figueredo is his brother, and I worked my ass off to get to the UFC, so that's kind of a little chip on my shoulder. Now, a black belt – in Muay Thai I just wonder what that exactly means because I, I I'm in Asia I lived in Asia I've been to Thailand a bunch of times. I've been around Muay Thai fighters you know in ingrained in that like culture and I've never seen that in Thailand a black belt yeah Muay Thai. That doesn't exactly that's why when I see stuff like that I don't take it too serious I'm like mm -hmm. hmm I guess if I did like a belt system I'd probably maybe be who knows maybe a black belt maybe a brown belt something like that but yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm just kind of like pre preparing for Davison Figueredo, really. From what I've watched, he strikes kind of like him, keeps his lead hand pretty low, fires his jab from the hip. Um, him, just like his brother, they walk forward constantly, just going forward. So I want to, same like with that Tyson now, like I said, he backed me up. Um, when I fought this dude, Zach Riley in LFA, I did a really good job, like moving, keeping the range. So I want to kind of get back to that with my footwork, just move around. Uh, stick with that boxing, good jabs, sit down on those punches. <clears throat> Do you feel like this is your debut? You know what I mean? You have to erase that from your mind, the first fight, and just go in there with a fresh fresh plate, basically. Yeah, it really does kind of feel like the debut now because everything just kind of felt like it was happening so fast last time. Like, we got offered the fight on, like, a week's notice. We get out there, like just getting bombarded with all the stuff we got to do for USADA and UFC and um yeah it was just uh I don't know this is like they're like uh I don't know I got the my feelers out there those first couple fights contender series and that first UFC fight and now I feel like I'm really going to go out and perform the way I know I can now you're heading to fight island did you think originally that you were fighting in Las Vegas because I've heard from a few other fighters that they thought that this date was in Vegas. Yeah, that's that's one thing I was trying to prepare myself for too cuz like I said they hadn't announced it. Uh they announced the 16th and the 23rd like on the last couple fight nights, but they weren't announcing the 20th. 
So I'm like, hmm, what's going to happen? Are they going to push it to the 30th and make it in Vegas again, or what's going on? But yeah, with O'Day, that one, like obviously they had said that was going to be in Vegas. But when they had told me the Francisco Figueredo um, fight and the O'Day was off, uh, Jason told me that it was most likely going to be in Abu Dhabi. So luckily, about a week before that, I had applied to get my passport and I did the expedited Mm -hmm. uh, shipping. So yeah, I just got that maybe like a week or two ago. All right, good. Now, you know, I guess it's going to work out for you anyways, because I feel like for the next year, you're going to either fight on Fight Island or you're going to fight in Vegas. So you might as well go out there and, and get that experience now. Yeah, exactly. Honestly, what I should have done when I first had that Contender Series fight signed or whatever, I should have went and got my passport since then. That way we didn't even come to this because we were at a point where when the O'Day fight fell through and they're offering this Francisco Figueredo fight, I almost got pulled from the fight just because I didn't have a passport on hand because they wanted a picture of it right then. So, yeah, it's something uh, young fighters coming up. If you think you're on the brink of the UFC, go get that passport. No doubt, no doubt. And so, you know, what type, what type of fight are you expecting out of yourself in this one? Um, I want to use my athleticism and um, and just, like, like I said, how I've been very active and he has. And I just want to put a pace on him from the beginning, you know, make him constantly be reacting to striking, clinch work, takedowns, keep him moving. Um, I really want to work my boxing. I feel like that was kind of a weakness in that Tyson Nam fight. You know, I wasn't really sitting down on those punches. So, like I said, I feel like those first two fights, like for some reason, I didn't get very bad jitters or I wasn't very nervous, but the gears just weren't turning the way they normally do. And this time I want to go out there and make it a point to just stay really focused and stay alert when I'm in there. And I know I can, uh, I know what I can do and I'm excited. I want to go out there and just show my technique, show my skill and, just go bring some uh food home for my family yeah definitely man that's the most important thing right there the last part yes sir yeah that's what it's all about bro i think um during like the last couple fights like uh i almost feel like i lost my sense of urgency kind of you know i was like kind of like you know i don't want to be like an arrogant dude or i don't want to be like a barbaric type fighter and I want to go out there and I want to go show my skill and show my art. And I want people to say, you know, that dude's good. But at the same time, like what what it's really all about is bringing food home for my family and coming back home to them. You know, that dude, me agreeing to go fight this dude on that day, you know, we get into that cage and he's trying to kill me. And the only person stopping him is that referee and I'm trying to kill him. So, you know, it's uh, when it comes down to is I'm trying to come home to my family and you know, it's very serious matter. So, ready for that. And also, like your your the card that you're fighting on is a couple of days before the McGregor card, and you get to experience that spectacle of the McGregor fight week, right? So, I guess that's yeah, good. for sure. Right? Yeah, I'm honestly kind of like pretty excited about that too. You know, I don't want to like get the jitters and fanboy out too hard or anything, mm -hmm. but it's gonna be pretty cool just being in that atmosphere, like. It's really going to legit feel like Mortal Kombat, like mm -hmm. Kumite style stuff, you know, go, all the best fighters from around the world coming to this one island. So definitely very special to partake in. No doubt, man. January 20th, uh, UFC Fight Island 8, Abu Dhabi. Thank you so much, Jerome, for the time, man. Good luck to you and uh, all the best, man. Hopefully you get in that cage like five times this year. Possible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can't wait to put on a show. And like you said, I just want to keep the ball rolling. I want to stay active, stay on it make a statement this fight and just show this is where I belong and make some big moves this next year. Take a move in the ring. You can hit me with the words you fling. I 